Hey, 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 everybody. Last Outrider here with another fun-filled video on who is the emperor. I'm not covering any rules this time. This is just another one of my videos where I talk about my opinion of 40K, like I did with Necrons and Tyranids and who are the Legion of the Dam. Who's the emperor? I think that after the leaving of Andy Chambers, when Games Workshop decided that they're going to flesh out the 40K universe and answer all the unanswerable questions, uh, who the Emperor is was probably one of the first ones. Now, for anybody who's been watching 40K, you know that they basically borrow from major works of science fiction that have come before. And the Emperor, in my opinion, obviously comes from Dune. He's the Kwisat Haderach. He's Pois Muad'Dib, who sees a future for humanity and knows that they have to be kept on this golden path. They even call it a golden path. And a narrow set of events must be maintained for humanity to reach the goals that he wants it to reach. And that goal required a great crusade to be sent out of super warriors to take over the galaxy and unite humanity. Does that sound familiar? Sound like another great crusade that we had? In fact, it sounds so familiar that I believe that Games Workshop probably had some copyright issues. Uh, the reason why I say this is because the Great Crusade in 40K, which began with religious zealots going across the galaxy and conquering it, turned into suddenly uh, atheists <laughs> running across the galaxy stomping out religion and all of that superstition bullshit. That's the type of uh, change that happens in a storyline that smacks to me of being caused by lawyers. <clears throat> but they couldn't change the name, so they still have a great crusade taking over the galaxy for the Emperor. It's still a crusade, but apparently it's an anti-religious crusade, just with very ironic naming. Uh, so the Emperor is Dune. He's on a golden path to save humanity from some crisis. In this case... We're going to now go into two other series that I strongly suggest people read. Two, two science fiction classics. Uh, one is the Amber Trilogy by uh, Roger Zelezny. That's with a Z. Which is going to explain the Primarchs and the relationship of the Emperor to the Primarchs. I, especially with this last book, The Unremembered Empire really got a very strong amber vibe from from uh, Abbott's description and brotherly relationships. I'm not going to give you any spoilers by it because I want you to go see the book. Uh, the next one is, oh, Midnight at the Well of Souls. Jack L. Chalker. Check that one out too. We're, we're dealing with the perpetuals and the old ones, and planning out the uh, evolution of the galaxy, or even universe itself, by a handful of old races that seed life across the universe for a purpose, an overall goal to be achieved. But we're talking about goals that span millions of years, billions of years, in which even the creation of entire species on a planet is just a move in a larger game. That's what I see humanity being in this. Uh, the Emperor created humanity as a move in and of itself in a bigger game, in a bigger game against chaos and the development of of the galaxy uh which is why the cabal and these perpetuals they can sacrifice entire species in in their long 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 term plans and i believe that the horus heresy therefore even though it's ten thousand years to them is a blink of an eye it's it's a small move in a game 
And I believe the point of the Horus Heresy was to prove the worth of humanity, to prove that humanity has the right stuff to resist chaos in the long term. I believe that the Cabal basically was convinced that humanity is too weak to really resist chaos in the long term, so you can use it to uh, as a as a it needs to be sacrificed for the greater good of the galaxy as a whole in their overall war against the primordial destroyer chaos. That's how I see it. The emperor then says, "You know what? You know what? I can prove you wrong. Here we go. I'm going to uh, have half my primarchs turn traitor and uh, fight me." And bring in chaos. I mean, really bring in chaos. I don't want some little temptation. I want the the ruinous powers themselves to really take an interest in us and really personally try to screw up humanity. And they're gonna say he's gonna he's gonna maintain humanity for as long as it takes for the cabal to be convinced that humanity doesn't need to be sacrificed. And then he can step off the throne and bring back the Primarchs and have the last battle at Armageddon and say, ha, 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 how you doing? I've proved it. Survive. Humanity can survive. Look, gaunt, gaunt ghosts, you know, Abnet wrote that too, where he said, look, they survived behind enemy lines for this incredible period of time without any help, without any support, and they're untainted. They're fucked up, but they're not tainted. Same with the Grey Knights. They're saying it there. Resisting the temptation of chaos is not some inherent trait inside of them. Uh, it's not a power. It's just a perpetual process that they have to go through to maintain pure. So they're basically just showing that humanity doesn't have to be sacrificed. Which is, is not a new storyline. Like I said, go check out those other two series, Well of Souls and uh, Amber, and you'll see. Uh, the, not a new idea. So, which is not wrong. It just means that's why it's coming in the 40K. I'm going to do my next video on the, uh, on the Primarchs and how I see them developing. How they've changed basically from these godlike beings that were never supposed to really have a part in 40K into, um, I believe, a game that's going to be coming out probably in the next two or three years, which allows you to basically play the uh, Great Crusade. Now, you're not going to have the Emperor, but I believe they are definitely shooting to scaling the Primarchs down to a point that they can be played as models in a game. That's the big change that I'm seeing. I'm going to go into why I see that in my next video, but that's basically it. So that is my conjecture on the future of 40K. You're going to have it on here first, so if it turns out to be true, you'll know. Ha, ha, ha. I can say I told you so. Sorry. I'll see you next time, guys. Enjoy. Bye.